So now we are going to move on uh, to category B electrophiles and their reactions with alkynes. Uh, so the electrophile, once again, that uh, is going to fit in the category B is a large atom, specifically a heteroatom, such as bromine, chlorine, et cetera, uh, with at least one lone pair. For example, elemental bromine, elemental chlorine, or mixed additions like uh, iodochloride or bromine and water, et cetera. So in this reaction, the alkyne is going to serve as the nucleophile and attack a bromine atom, which is connected to another bromine via a weak and long bromine-bromine bond that can break. And that dissociation puts a bromide into solution. At the same time as the alkyne attacking bromine, you get this back attack with that lone pair so that you can form a bridge intermediate, which could form on either the top or the bottom of the plane. And now those carbons rehybridize to sp2. At this stage, now the bromide nucleophile is going to attack either carbon of the bromonium ion, which is going to break the bridge. And if you just add one equivalent of bromine, then you are going to make this dibromo product, okay? Or the bromines are vicinal to one another. They are one, two. Or in the longest continuous chain, you would say two, three. They are on adjacent carbons. And stereochemically, because it goes through a bridge intermediate, that nucleophile must attack anti to the bridge. So in this case, we get the two bromines trans about the double bond or anti to one another. So that produces the E alkene. Further reaction could continue if we use another equivalent of bromine or excess. So in the next example, the mechanism is the same where the alkyne is going to attack elemental chlorine causing dissociation of the chlorine-chlorine bond and a lone pair from chlorine is going to attack back to make the bridge. So this leads to an analogous bridge intermediate that is electrophilic and can be attacked at either carbon, they're equally substituted. So the chloride nucleophile will now attack from underneath the bridge giving that anti-stereospecific E alkene intermediate. And if you were to add a second equ equivalent of chlorine, the reaction will continue. So if it goes through another chlorination, we're going to see the typical reaction of an alkene through another bridge intermediate. So through a two-step mechanism, which we've done before in the alkene chapter, this vinyl dichloride will go on to react with Cl2 to give the tetrachlorinated, where you have this 2-2-3-3 tetrachloral product. So the final example here is using a mixed reagent where we have a polar iodine chlorine bond and therefore the chlorine is electron rich and the iodine is electron poor or the iodine is the electrophile. So that electrophile is going to be attacked by the nucleophile or the alkyne. So the alkyne attacks the iodine causing the iodine chlorine bond to dissociate. And the iodine is a large atom of lone pairs and therefore 
it can attack back to make the bridge intermediate. In this case, we do have a terminal alkyne. So remember that if it's not equally substituted, this secondary benzylic carbon is going to better stabilize positive charge or there will be more electrophilic character of that secondary carbon than there would be at this primary non-benzylic position. So the nucleophile in the next step, chloride, is going to regioselectively attack the carbon that is more electrophilic, breaking open the bridge. And it attacks in an anti-stereospecific manner where chloride and iodide are trans to one another. And chloride is regioselectively on that carbon that is benzylic. All right, so I'm just abbreviating the phenyl ring here as pH. So that's after one equivalent. You get this E alkene again. If it reacts again, we're going to see an analogous mechanism, but now with an alkene. It's going to go through a bridge and the iodine and chlorine will add a second time to the same carbon for the same region, reasons of regioselectivity. So once again, in this case, we get an achiral product. There are no chiral centers or any stereocenters for that matter. Okay. So there's not much different from an alkyne versus an alkene with these large heteroatom electrophiles. So they go through bridge intermediates, they give anti-addition products, or in other words, E-alkenes. Uh, but then if they react a second time, which is usually inevitable, then they will react to give these tetrahalogenated products that are often achiral. For more practice on this, you can visit uh, unit two of my Orgo One course guide at chemguides.com.